tip the two great theories of the 20th century, relativity and quantum theory, uh, fight each other. And the great uh, ambition of the 21st century is to unify them. Uh, describe the mysteries that each one has on their own and some of the opportunities for their unification. Well, Einstein, in his general relativity, taught us that space and time are warped, that uh, the circumference around a black hole is very small compared to its diameter, that time slows near the surface of the Earth and slows to a crawl near the surface of a black hole, that space around a black hole can whirl. We've figured all those things out by looking at the mathematics of Einstein's general relativity laws. However, there are huge gaps in our understanding of general relativity. For example, suppose you have two black holes that orbit each other, they come crashing together and they merge. The merger we know will create violent oscillations of the warping of space and warping of time. It's like you have two tornadoes. Each black hole spins on its axis. You have two tornadoes whirling and whirling and these tornadoes are orbiting around each other and their orbital motion drags space as well. So you have two tornadoes with a whir that are embedded in a third larger tornado. We want to know what happens when these tornadoes come crashing together and the tornadoes are not made from air but they're made from warped space. We don't know the answer because we've not been clever enough to solve Einstein's general relativity equations. We have begun to get the answer just in the last year and a half. We are getting the answer through a whole new technology for solving Einstein's equations through su simulations on supercomputers. Now it's remarkable that it has taken some 30 years of work by dozens of superb physicists and computer scientists to develop the tools to be able to simulate warp space-time on supercomputers, simulate the collisions of black holes, finally after 30 years of struggle, struggle yeah. where the big bottleneck is we didn't understand Einstein's laws well enough, we finally do, we are beginning to be able to collide black holes. So the groups at, at, around the world, at various places around the world are doing this today, and from those simulations, for the first time, we are under, beginning to understand the violent uh, vibrations of warped space and time when the black holes don't spin. We uh, still don't understand when they're spinning rapidly, so we still don't uh, know the nature of highly warped space time. We will study this also observationally using gravitational waves, using the ripples in the fabric of space and time that are created when these black holes come crashing together, uh, measuring those gravitational waves with instruments for which a prototype is right here uh, in this laboratory beside us, the prototype for LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. We could see these waves this year. We may see them a few years from now, but we will see them within the next few years in a combination of supercomputer simulations and observations will enable us then to begin to probe warped space-time and general relativity in ways that we were never possible to, to do before. I believe there are enormous surprises just in classical general relativity, no issue of quantum theory, mm -hmm. that will come out from numerical relativity, solving Einstein's equations on computers, gravitational wave observations, the combination and separately. We're going to have a very different view of warped space and time uh, 10 years from now than we have today due to these great breakthroughs in two different sets of tools. Two completely different approaches, simulations on computers and real observations of the universe and bringing them together bringing is them remarkable, together. focused on relativity. Now, what happens when we also consider quantum mechanics? Is, is there some observational technologies using gravitational waves there? So, when we consider quantum mechanics, we have uh, for gravitational waves, we have predictions of gravitational waves that are produced by quantum mechanical objects, quantum gravity objects, objects whose existence relies on a marriage of quantum theory with general relativity. And therefore, there are predictions of waves that we can observe with LIGO, with these instruments that, uh, that uh, we're here in the laboratory with a prototype. There are things that we can observe that can test 
the unified laws or the attempt at unified laws, the string theory in particular. There are two predictions that we are going after. One is waves from the Big Bang birth of the universe itself. Uh, those waves will bring us a picture of the ultimate phenomenon of unified relativity and quantum mechanics, the creation of the universe. This is so amazing to be able to have direct information from the very beginning, from the singularity. What kind of information, let, let's set the setting for this, this yeah. is so important. In terms of the light waves, we can see about how close. So if we look out at the universe with electromagnetic waves, we can see radiation that was produced in the early universe coming to us from all directions on the sky because of the expansion of the universe, it has been shifted toward the red and it yes. has got in the microwave band. We see so-called cosmic microwave background radiation or CMB radiation that brings us a picture of the universe when it was about 300,000 years old. That's very young, but very still... Young, but that's not the beginning. Not and the we beginning. can't see earlier because earlier than that, the universe was so hot and so dense that electromagnetic waves couldn't travel. They just bounced just, off each they other. Bounced and... off of the, they bounced off of the electrons, they were absorbed by the matter, okay. and so they just couldn't bring us any information. Now I've heard that neutrinos, very difficult to measure because they interact so, so weakly with matter, but that probe, if it can be done, can go how close? Back to about one second. One second. Within yeah. one second of the birth of the universe, or, and so if we see, can see someday neutrinos from the very early universe, like the cosmic microwave background yeah. coming from all directions, we will have a snapshot of the universe at age one second. Mm -hmm. But earlier than that, the universe was so hot and so dense that neutrinos couldn't travel. They would be absorbed and scattered. Okay, so now the only way to get into that critical one second is gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are the only form of radiation that is so penetrating that it was never scattered or absorbed by matter, going all the way back through that first one second to the creation of the universe in the Big Bang, back at a time of about 10 to the minus 43 seconds. You know, it's, it's peculiar that we can talk about, about uh, creation at a time, because what was being created was time and was space, but as time comes into being, comes into existence in the creation process, it's a, it's, the concept of time is very fuzzy at the beginning and then it becomes classical and mm -hmm. real like the time we see. And as it starts to come into being uh, and becomes classical, that t is taking about 10 to the minus 43 seconds. And gravitational waves are the only form of radiation that can probe back to that very beginning through all of the very hot and dense uh, matter of the beginning of the universe. Simulate what we might discover if the gravitational waves indeed can be uh, the signature of that singularity. What, what would the frequencies, amplitudes, patterns of those waves be? And from that, what can we infer about the origin? So the first thing that we will discover probably is by a different technique of looking for gravity waves than LIGO here in this lab that we, where we study black holes, but by the imprint that the gravitational waves leave on this cosmic microwave background radiation, sure. they create in this radiation, and in, in, they come out, they interact with the uh, hot gas in the universe when the universe is about 300,000 years old. They move the electrons back and forth in the gas uh, through the stretching and squeezing of space, and uh, the, uh, the electromagnetic waves scatter off those electrons and get polarization imprinted on them. And the pattern of polarization will tell us about the gravity creation waves from the beginning of the universe. And this pattern of polarization then, uh, which uh, huge teams of, 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 uh, of cosmologists are going out to try to observe, which was predicted uh, by a set of three uh, theorists, Mark Kamienkowski and colleagues, a, a few years ago. This pattern of polar polarization then is our first clue to the beginning of the universe. And what it will give us in this case is one number. It will tell how fast the inflation was at the very beginning. 
Uh, so it, it will tell us, uh, be a direct verification of the inflation of the universe and just how fast it was at the very beginning. Later, when we see uh, gravitational waves in other wavelength bands with, uh, with other techniques, we will probe details, uh, of spatial details, uh, in various directions of the birth of the universe. What we will see, I don't know, it may be very smooth, it might be chaotic, uh, uh, there will surely be fluctuations because that was a quantum mechanical process. What we should see is not, uh, not fully clear at this point. Uh, what uh, we uh, will see uh, will really depend uh, on the physics of the birth of the universe, and that will come out of string theory probably, out of the laws of quantum gravity. Is it possible to have any test, per se, of string theory? This is one of the big criticisms of string theory, that there's no capacity to test any of these ideas. So besides the birth of the universe, where we don't have good predictions, there is a prediction from string theory that in the inflation at the beginning of the universe, some of these tiny strings may have been expanded to cosmic size. When two of these then cosmic strings uh, pass through each other, stretching across the universe, when they pass through each other, there's a high probability, according to string theory, for them to reconnect so that you have uh, one string shaped like that with a uh, kink on it, yeah. another string like this with a kink on it. The kinks then travel down the string at the speed of light, producing gravitational waves. And we with LIGO, with the uh, instrument that is behind this wall here, we with LIGO are looking for those gravitational waves. There's a prediction for a precise shape of those gravitational waves that would come from these kinks on strings. And if we see that, that will be uh, the first or one of the first tests of string theory. Uh, string theory is making predictions, not firm predictions, but highly plausible predictions. This is one of them, and, and, and astronomers are out looking to test those predictions. It's really remarkable that relativity, quantum theory, string theory can't, is now all being subject to real observations. It is, uh, relativity has been subject to real observations for a long time. String theory, it's beginning. And it's very exciting time. And ultimately, a unification will give us real understanding of the origin of the universe. Absolutely. The unification plus the observations from gravitational waves, but also from the relics of the uh, birth of the universe, such as you and me. <laughs>